Okay. So the alveolar epithelium is going to contain two cells, a type 1 pneumocyte, and most of them are going to be type 1 pneumocytes, and a type 2 pneumocyte. And so the type 1 pneumocytes are very stretched out, so you can't really even see them as cells, I think, a lot unless you cut it through the nuclei, nucleus. Um, but the type 2 pneumocytes are not as stretched out, and so they're a lot rounder in shape, and that's what they take up um, the supposedly more of the cell populations and they sort of um, take up the places where the alveoli come together and they can show up sort of like in, li in little bunches or groups. Okay, so the type uh, 1 pneumocytes, uh, like for example, here's a nucleus here, sort of like all, all stretched out. You don't always, you definitely have a type 1 pneumocyte along this entire border. Even if you don't have a cut through the nucleus, its cell membrane is still there. And that is the cell that the um, oxygen and carbon dioxide is going to pass through after it comes out of the endothelial cell that's lining the capillary. Okay. Then type 2 pneumocytes are harder to see on uh, a histology slide, but we'll be looking around for some anyways. But when you look at an EM, they look really neat looking because they have these um, uh, uh, structures called lamellar bodies, and they, it almost looks like it's a layered, some sort of layer uh, shell or rock. Um, and they also have um, multivesicular bodies that are also here. They're a little smaller and they, they look different in appearance. And there's one there. And they are actually going to join the lamellar bodies. Um, and uh, this is where you have the newly synthesized surfactant uh, located at. So a type 2 pneumocyte is another cell in, that you have in the respiratory system that is going to um, secrete surfactant. And uh, pulmonary surfactant is important for decreasing the surface tension in the alveolar spaces. And Dr. Levitsky will talk to you about that um, at length. And um, surfactant is going to contain an important phospholipid, and, and it's called DPPC. I cannot pronounce that word, but you give it a shot. And also uh, several surfactant proteins. Um, I, I, it's at, they're called SPA and like SPB, SPC, and SPD. And your textbook goes into detail about the different proteins and what they are specifically responsible for if you want to uh, read that information. Uh, for its clinical relevance, but um, generally you'll you'll learn the physiology and and you now know that type two pneumocytes are the cells that secrete these this uh, substance. And uh, here you can see a couple. I just sort of uh, pointed a couple out. I guess uh, this is a pretty plastic section. Most of our lung sections don't look anything like this. But um, a type two pneumocyte is is sometimes uh, easier to find if it has some nucleoli uh, in in the nucleus. Okay, and so don't forget, uh, it's not really something that's very easy to see, but the um, the uh, septa that are in the alveolar, between the alveolar spaces are going to have not only collagen fibers, but also a lot of elastic fibers and reticular fibers. The elastic fibers are very important for the recoil that occurs in the alveolar spaces and are very important, therefore, for pulmonary functioning. And this is going to be apparent when you talk about conditions like emphysema. Now, there are also several different immune cells that can be found when the, inside the interstitium of the lung. Um, notably, a macrophages um, and mast cells are going to be there, uh, but you can find even eosinophils and other cells there as well. This is a, a lung of a congestive heart failure patient, and you can see a very, very congested pulmonary capillaries. Blood comes out into the alveolar spaces, and macrophages are going to ingest those red blood cells, try to clean up the debris, and so what we're looking at here are hemos considering laden macrophages. Macrophages in the respiratory system are commonly referred to as dust cells. And you can see them in normal circumstances, and not all of them look active. They just are sort of wandering around. So the big picture of gas exchange is that oxygen is going to come down through the conducting portion, down to the respiratory portion, and into an alveolar space. And the, uh, I said oxygen, but I meant uh, air that you inspire. So that, that air is going to have a, a, several different things in it, but one of the things that you want out of it is oxygen. So oxygen is going to have to pass through the endothelial cell, through the interstitium, through the endothelial cell. Uh, I think I said 
endothelial cell. I meant the epithelial cell that lines the alveolar space. So a type 2 neumocyte, it's got to come through the interstitium. If it's got, you know, hopefully it doesn't have a real thick interstitium. Um, sometimes in, with pathologic conditions like chronic bronchitis, that will get thicker. And then it has to cross the endothelial cells, uh, plasma membrane, um, and the cell itself and come in to attach itself to a red blood cell. And the same note, carbon dioxide comes out of the red blood cell and is going to um, come across the same barrier but the opposite direction and come to, into the alveolar space and you get mixing of air as you inspire and expire to replenish uh, the air to bring more oxygen in and more carbon dioxide out. So that's the big picture that you will be talking about uh, for the next couple weeks. So that means anatomically, you end up with a very specific anatomic gas barrier. And this is not anything that is new to you. I just said that here's the pneumocyte type one cell membrane. Okay, this is the fused basal lamina that it has with the endothelial cell of the capillary. And so oxygen is going to come this way and it's going, this is a, uh, a, a erythrocyte and it is going to attach itself to the red blood cell and then carbon dioxide is going to go the opposite way and come into the alveolar space. All right, do you remember when the lungs developed and in gross anatomy, we talked about the visceral and parietal pleura that were the coverings of the lungs and then in between there you had a really small space that was called the pleural space and they had a little bit of serous fluid that was secreted by the mesothelium that lined the pleuras well that's what we're going to see here so the visceral pleura which you get to see when you're looking at a lung the parietal pleura has always it's been removed you have, you're not going to get a chance to see that in a, a histology slide but um for the visceral pleura you can see the mesothelium um because it's going to be a simple squamous uh, epithelial sheet that we'll look at. Um, and then it dries, right underneath that, you'll see a little bit of connective tissue. And that's kind of synonymous when someone talks about the serosa of a lung um, or the serous membrane of the lung. So that this, these are all the anatomic structures that uh, people are referring to. So in this section, you can see that this is the cut part of the lung that is continuous with the rest of the lung parenchyma, these areas here. This has got a little bit of a darker uh, pink line that sort of comes comes all in this direction. So this is the site of the visceral pleura that um, that we're looking at here. And if I zoom really close in on one, I found this, um, I don't remember if it was this slide or if it's a different slide, but I zoomed in so you can see the simple squamous mesothelium and it's called mesothelium because of its derivation um, that's on the outside of the pleura outside of the lung and then here you can see the underlying connective tissue and so it, it kind of looks somewhat messy because of the artifact here but it's continuous with the lung parenchyma you can see alveolar spaces located in this area okay